quarterback play is the centerpiece of this whole thing. And that's partly Kyle, too. I mean, he's quarterback, offensive guy, five years to find his guy. The Colts threw the ball downfield in a monsoon more than the 49ers do when it's 75 degrees and sunny with Jimmy Garoppolo quarterback. Like, in a normal game, if no one threw the ball downfield under those conditions, you'd watch and go, well, no one threw the ball downfield. It's pouring rain. But the Colts had no problem throwing the ball downfield. And it wasn't just for pass interferences. They hit the first, actually, they got a PI, but they hit the 57 yarder or whatever it was to Michael Pittman. There was a dramatic difference between the two teams in the game. One of the teams had an athletic quarterback that threw the ball down the field, and one of the teams didn't have either one of those things. Carson Wentz changed the game with his arm. His ability and the trust in his ability to cut it loose changed the game. It was the it was the major difference in the game. And then his ability to run also changed the game. I he got a big was, first down on like a second and 15, remember? He Cameron ran twice got guys. deked by Carson Wentz. Twice it got faked out. The other was on the touchdown. Started to zoom in on the running backs. I told, the, I, told, the I told you before the game. the game, though, guy, during the week, I'm like, they got an advantage at quarterback. Just... And it wasn't even, I mean, their numbers look pretty similar, but the talents, they're not even in the same ballpark. It is what you're saying physically. Now, in fairness, now, I, I still think it's a little weird. I don't quite know when he got injured. He was not available in the game, right? I, I think it would have been a concern and people would have been, what are we doing not having Trey in the game? He was not available to play, according to this knee injury. <laughs> That we're not well, I mean, sure you, what happened. Like, why wouldn't you have him available to even be your yeah, backup? That you would no. like that would have been the game to mix him in as like the whole two quarterback thing. Would have that would this would have been the game to do it? So he clearly but, was. But, but before we even get to Trey, and you tweeted this right when they went off on the little rant. Now, like you had mentioned before, we hopped on here. It could have been Al bullshit, and it was kind of a. It hit a pretty boring streak of the game because of the monsoon. Uh, again, if you're listening out of state, you go monsoon. Yeah, for us, that's a monsoon. It's been and- pouring for over 24 <laughs> straight hours. Yeah, it's it's intense for us. But again, I think people in other places, they, they get used to this. Right? All traffic is at <laughs> 17 miles an hour, okay? Uh, the, the Jimmy Garoppolo experiment, and when I say experiment, it wasn't up until this year. But the moment you traded for Trey, it was like, you know, he's not good enough to just have this established spot. Yet he was still talked about up until tonight with, you know, the most famous broadcast crew the league has as this hypothetical, like, what if he plays well? It's Halloween! They were talking like it's August. The season is established. He was not very good early. He makes a couple plays like he's always played, but now he's hurt, and tonight you saw he he is a disadvantage for them. He, He really is. I Every time, unlike Wentz, every time Wentz threw it, especially past the first couple drives, and the ball would leave the camera where you couldn't see where it was going, I would say to myself, oh my God, here comes a pass interference. I've, and I think every human being, including Michael Phelps that was in the front row, to every human on their couch, even a non-Niner fan or a Colts fan, were like, oh, here comes a P.I. Yet when Jimmy, the ball would leave his hand and it would go, and it didn't happen often, through the screen where we had to wait for the camera to move, I was thinking, interception. Like, that is where Jimmy's at right now. He is a disadvantage for the team. Uh, I would say at this current state, he is no longer even a top 20 quarterback in the NFL. Uh, he He's going to be, and listen, he's made a lot of money, but he'll never, ever, I, I guess you never say never in sports. His days of making as much money as he makes now are probably long gone. Now, he's lucky he could be a backup for a while, and he would immediately next year be a high-paid backup. Uh, he'll be kind of in this weird spot. I mean, he'll get another chance to start, I would imagine. There are enough teams, right? But his, like, I, I think we know who he is right now, right? He still has four, five, six, who knows? If he can get the Chase Daniel Hill, he might have eight years left. But this guy is not a starting quarterback in the NFL. Carson Wentz, who has been, I wouldn't even just say football. Would you agree, like, one of the most polarizing players in sports the last three, four years, Carson Wentz, in all the sports, and listen, you still you watch them. They, there are some hero balls. There is enough where it's like this. They're gonna keep working with that guy, right? I mean, he brings them more than anyone else can bring them. Even Philip Rivers last year. I think they mentioned this. Did we talk about this, or they mentioned this on the broadcast? They're like, if Rivers would have come back, they probably wouldn't have got Wentz. I think they're better off just because his ceiling. Even though Rivers won eleven games, they weren't gonna win a playoff game with Rivers. 
if this guy does play well, you could win a playoff game with this Carson Wentz on their team. Like the version of this 49er team, you have no shot if Jimmy, and he can't because he gets injured, but if he can start all 17 games, the 49ers could not have made the playoffs with Jimmy Garoppolo. Do you agree with that? If he had just started all 17 games for them? He's just not good enough. Uh, yeah, I agree with that now. Factoring in their I, factoring I, in their other corners. And I did the, not the whole think team. that at the beginning of the year, but I, I definitely think that now. The irony is that drafting Trey Lance was sort of this acknowledgement by Kyle Shanahan that I need somebody who can just do stuff on the field beyond just what I tell them to do, right? The feeling with Kyle when we talked about Kirk Cousins was like, oh, Kyle just wants a guy who he tells him what to do. As long as that guy executes it, then they're golden. Well, drafting a player like Trey Lance is, you always you always say it's like it must when he walked off the field after playing Josh Allen last year, he must have been thinking like, I need to get me one of those. Drafting a guy like Trey Lance is an acknowledgement that like, I need a guy. Yes, it's also a guy that I could run and draw some different plays for, but I need a guy that can make a play because once the ball is snapped, actually once the play clock gets down to 15, there's nothing I can do. Right, I can yell into his headset like Justin Fields, 12 guys, snap it! But there's nothing I can do once the play happens. The players play the game. The players play the game. And if the player can only do what I tell him to do, and that's it, he can't do anything beyond that, then that's not good enough. So Trey Lance needs to play because this team needs somebody who can go out there and make a play for them at, at quarterback. That's what Carson Wentz can do. And Carson he is actually... Did it. He did it tonight. And he's kind of not even being reckless doing it. I mean, the kind of reckless play was a turnover. The stuff that Carson did that was impressive was within the, right? It wasn't a lot of ad lib, but he just has an ability to open the game up in a way the 49ers feel like they've been playing games in like these 10 foot domes where like it's cr- nothing it's happens. I know it's in wild. any direction other than horizontally, nothing well, happens it. vertically. And, and, and that's it's where... just, it's, it's suffocating to watch. <laughs> it, it, the it, only it really chance is. they have now was Trey Lance. It really is. I mean, it's it's like I, I don't even know how to describe it. Like anyone can relate watching a bad baseball team who's every time you just go to the bullpen, it's like, oh, we're gonna get shelled. Or a basketball team where you just can't make any shots. It's just their offense gets in this rudderless situation, which goes back to Kyle. And this if you were gonna defend Kyle, like if I was if I was Kyle's agent, if I was one of his good friends. If I was one of his guys on staff that's a believer in him, I'd go, it's because of Jimmy fucking Garoppolo. He's just not good enough. And then that's where I think Haberman and Milkoff would say, okay, we've tried the experiment. It led you to two and four. Even though one of those losses isn't totally on Jimmy's hands, though it kind of is because he got injured. (laughs) Uh, Just rip the Band-Aid off and just go all in with Trey. Even if you're going to suck more than I guess you would, but it's this is what we were arguing about with Greg Papa. Like, what you're not winning games with this guy. It, it was my argument with Andy Dalton. I understand it if it's like Kyle Trask is the future of Tampa Bay. I was like, yeah, you got Tom Brady <laughs> and you're winning. And that's obviously that's a terrible example. But just if if it was more of a fringe, like, you know, top 15 guy, Jimmy is no longer a top 20 guy in the NFL when they're all healthy and they're all playing normal. He has to be kind of on to crack that top 20. I would not have him as a top 20 player. And and listen, I, I don't think like quarterback, 15 quarterback. to, yeah, quarter, quarterback. I don't think 15 to 20 is that great. But it, it's just like he has regressed. And it might just be as simple as he just hasn't gotten any better because he just kind of looks the same. And you can't win. Like the one thing you notice about the NFL, and you just look at the Niners schedule, like there are a couple high-end teams, right? They haven't played the Rams yet. They played Arizona. But even, and obviously Green Bay is 6-1, and one, but like the an average team, a team that could win seven to nine games, like the Colts, if fucking your quarterback is Jimmy Garoppolo and he's a little off, you will lose. You will lose. And that's what any coach worth their salt will tell you. Like, the NFL is hard. And I think sometimes fans kind of laugh when their coaches say that. And it, I understand if you're playing the Jets or whatever, but beside like the bottom two teams, and even watching a little bit of the Lions game today, like – you do, like, if you're a little off and a team has a little life and they just, the Lions don't have as many good players, but, like, a, a six-win team in this league. The Lions went can, onside kick and fake punt. Yeah, they, they had to throw the kitchen sink. But I, I do think the Colts are a good example. Coming in this game, they were two and four. They were a team probably destined for, like, seven or eight. 
Now it's like they, they could be thinking, well, hey, we just get back to 500 and we get to 10. And you just watch them. You go, well, the Colts just have some talent and Jimmy's not talented enough to out-talent them. Debo is. Bosa is. Fred is. But Jimmy, to me, felt like a red flag. And listen, when I say a red flag, I mean a liability in the game more than an asset. And Trey, in this situation, who knows what it would have looked like tonight if he was healthy. It could have been worse than Jimmy. I am acknowledging that. But, like, once you make this, once you make the draft uh, compensation and you're in this position record-wise, it, it's time. I mean, it's... Again, he's got to be healthy with this injuries. I still think it's a little weird, but like if he's healthy, Jimmy Garoppolo cannot start anymore. He he just can't. That that's when you're really going to lose some people that I think you are lucky with this fan base that like listen, it's like you just give them Trey, they'll at least take a deep breath. But if you keep forcing Jimmy down people's throats like we're going to try to win, that's when people will really turn on you. I, I, well, I want to hold I want to that I agree with you. I want to get to that in a second cuz there's actually Shanahan addressed that after the game, and I'll show you the quote here in a second. Um, But as it relates to Trey Lance, I think what they need, you start naming guys like Bosa and Fred Warner and and, uh, Debo Samuel, who's just – Debo is – I mean, you talk about one of the most fun players to watch in the NFL. He's a a baller guy. He is a baller. He is so good. He's a baller. And you can get him to do anything. But you need your quarterback to be able to make plays for you. Like, just think about that phrase for a second. It's it's such a generic phrase, and everybody says it. Make Get your quarterback to make some plays. But what plays are they making outside of the design of whatever a particular play is? How about the one where he fumbled not, D, kind of like moves up and moves over? You're like, oh, my God. It, Jimmy, but it was, I mean, I, I told you, we, we were texting before the game, and what did I say to you? I said, it'll be a miracle if he doesn't throw two picks and have a strip sack. What do you do? Two picks and a strip sack. I told you. Now the one was kind of off Debo's chest, but still. Yeah. It was that's that that strip sack is the play, and and you're right. Trey Lance might have two picks in a strip sack. Trey could add four picks. Who knows, right? <laughs> but he yeah. might have tucked the ball and run and just. Yeah, you, he could have made some plays. The bottom line is, in a game where you went through the box score, a lot was equal. Everyone's playing in this downpour. Jerseys were soaked. Their quarterback made a few plays. To me, Carson Wentz was the difference in it. Carson Wentz versus Jimmy Garoppolo was the difference in the game because the running backs both played well. I thought defensively, guys made plays up front. The pass interference plays, you know. Again, the Niners don't even get you that the, ball you, down the field. You know field. the crazy thing, though, guys? Because because you just look at the box score. Their like, numbers are almost the same, right? Yeah. Are you looking do at you know it? Where, do you, yeah, do you know where it changes? You go to the team stats. The penalties. And this has been the thing the last couple games. The Niners do not have 15 penalties to like six. They have about the same number of penalties as their opponent. Today, six for seven. The Colts, six for 45. The Niners, seven for 122. Wow. That is almost an That's a 80 Pro Bowl yard receiver. difference. An 80 yard difference in penalties. That's a, the Niners. In, in, a, in a game where not that many yards were at hand, that is a lot of fucking yards. The Niners, uh, that's a Pro Bowl receiver, John, in penalties. Yeah. 